Welcome back to Morning in America. Two political stories we're following. It could cause some fireworks in Congress going into the new year. West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin on Sunday, he was dodging a question as to whether he would leave the Democratic Party and become an independent just weeks after Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema announced just that. Both have been holdouts in the Democratic Party. A mansion responding that his focus is on the Inflation Reduction Act, saying, quote, let's see how that plays out. I'll let you know later what I decide to do. But right now, I have no intentions of changing anything except working for West Virginians. This is House Minority Leader Republican Kevin McCarthy reportedly still needs to lock up the 218 votes needed to become House Speaker, with Republicans set to take control of that chamber in just over two weeks after gaining a slim majority. Niall Stanage, White House columnist for The Hill, joining me right now. Happy Monday. Let's start with McCarthy. Where does this stand uh, in terms of how many people, how many Republicans are backing him and how unprecedented is it if the Speaker vote goes into several rounds? Where it stands right now is that he doesn't have the votes. To make a very long story short, Adrian, as Minority Leader McCarthy, as he is now, can only afford to lose four Republicans, assuming all Democrats vote against him. Right now, there are five Republicans against him. He himself has acknowledged that those five have not shifted their position in recent weeks. So there is the real potential for chaos, although he may still uh, scrape through in some way. In terms of how unprecedented it is, this would be the first example in 100 years of a, a nominee for Speaker not winning on the first round if McCarthy fails to do that. If that happens, it goes into more and more rounds of voting until he or someone else emerges with a majority. And I'd like to bring you a little history, Adrian. In 1923, Frederick Gillette of Massachusetts was elected Speaker on the ninth round of voting. Okay, nine rounds. So we've seen this before. Mm. It's just been a while. Uh, a new Monmouth uh, University poll finds a lot of Americans are not yet sure what they think of McCarthy. 54% uh, don't have really any opinion. Uh, that also includes the most Republicans who have no opinion. But among the GOP, only 20% disapprove of McCarthy compared to 48% who disapprove of Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. So do you think, you know, this matters at all? The, the fact that constituents don't really have the love for McCarthy or have an opinion either way? It matters in a couple of ways, I think. It does show that he hasn't made as much of an impact that he doesn't have as defined a political identity as someone say, like, say, Mitch McConnell. You could argue, if you wanted to look for the silver lining, that it means that uh, McCarthy has straddled opinion within the Republican Party, at least as far as people who have an opinion of him at all, whereas McConnell is clearly identified with a certain wing, essentially an anti-Trump wing, and that is what drives McConnell's negative numbers up in a way that isn't true of McCarthy. Let's get back to Manchin. Uh, he said that he had no intention of switching to become an independent for now. Uh, what is he likely weighing? And is this the change in tone? I think he's weighing largely how to stay relevant and important in a Senate that now has a 51-49 effective Democratic majority. I mean, clearly Kirsten Sinema has declared herself independent but will still caucus with Democrats. So Senator Manchin wants to stay relevant. He has implied or suggested during previous tense times with his party that he could leave. There's even been some speculation that he could ultimately become a Republican. So I think that's a way of retaining influence for him. It's effectively saying, do you want to play the game my way or will I take my ball and go home? And that's a, a tactic that he has used somewhat in the past as well. Yeah, and Manchin is up for re-election as is cinema. So I, I'm sure that this also impacts both of them and Democrats this next Congress. Very much so. I mean, it, particularly in Senator Manchin's case, he is in a state that former President Trump won twice by almost 40 points. Now, in between those two wins, in 2018, Senator Manchin won re-election by three points, carried about half of West Virginia's counties, whereas the Democratic presidential nominees carried zero of those counties. That doesn't happen by accident. That happens because he's able to stake out positions that are different from the National Democratic Party that seem more in step with or simpatico with West Virginians. And so I assume he's going to continue on that trajectory. All right, Niall, thanks as always. Good to see you. We'll see you again soon. 
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.